The dynamic yield report can be found in uh, what's this reporting module and under reports and dynamic yield. And it's not as much a actual report as a tool for creating your own custom yield reports. And as you probably know, the yield report, the basic yield report is a, a statically uh, predefined report where you can see uh, yield metrics uh, broken down to products and test operations, product and process, if you will. Uh, and compared to that, the dynamic yield um, gives you the possibility to create yield reports based on any combination of header data. And in my version, you can see that I created quite a lot of these. One for MISC info, software yield, station yields. I have one for retests, frequent failures, product and fixture, and so on. And the first time around you use this report, this list will be empty and all you will have is this green button to create a new view. So let's create a new one and uh, look into how you can configure these reports. Once I click new view, uh, I will get this message box where I can select a name for my new report. Let's call this one demo. And I can choose from a couple of predefined templates. These templates are starting points for this report and it's not uh, crucial that you select the right one. You can create any report based on any of these, uh, these um, templates. So simply se select the one that is closest to what you are looking for. And in this case, let's use the top one, part number and test operation. I click save and actually nothing happens because the report is already loaded and all you can see is the filter. And to uh, look at the content of this report, I will need to apply the filter. Before I do that, uh, to reduce loading times, I'm going to reduce the, the time period filter to one day. And then I hit apply. And this will load the report, which con contains uh, one grid and one corresponding chart. And in this case, using the, the um, part number and test operation uh, template, you can see that this report actually is more or less a duplicate of the basic yield report called just yield report. Here you can see that there is one row for each part number and test operation. And um, if I sort this, you can see that in some cases, the same part number will be listed multiple times because it's tested in different processes. But in this report, compared to the standard yield report, if I go to the column options and change the column settings, this report will um, will dynamically re-update and, and the query will be changed to fit the new columns. So if I, for instance, remove the test operation column from this view, the report will reload. And now the report is aggregated only on part number since the test operation is not included. That means there's only one row for each part number. And this goes for all of these columns down to unit number. All of these are header property columns that will change the aggregation of the data. So let's try another one with removing the part number and product name and go for something completely different. Let's look at the station name. This will re-aggregate the report to show one row for each station available. And I can add combinations. I can introduce the operator as well. Now you can see that you have operator and station name. You can also look at um, software file name, software version, or MISC information, for instance. Let's try it with MISC information description and value. This will show one column for the descriptions and uh, one column for the, the value. And using the grouping option of the grid, I can also choose to group by MISC info description. And this will show me one line for each description. And if I expand one, for instance, this one, UT description, I will have separated yield metrics for every unique value of the UT description. In addition to these first columns that um, influence the aggregation of the data, 
I also have an um, um, extensive set of, uh, of metrics. So anything from unit count will change the columns that provide the actual uh, KPI metrics. And for each pass, we have uh, the number of passed report units, the number of failed units, the pass, in this case, first pass percentage, the first pass trend, the roll tribute yield, the parts per million, parts per million trend, and then you have the same metrics over again for the second pass, third pass, and last pass yield. And finally, we have some uh, special <clears throat> uh, columns like test report count, previous previous periods test report report count, uh, test report yield, and also the number of retests. And of course, we have the chart that displays the same data as the, the grid. And um, chart can be added to the dashboard and you can drill by clicking in the chart as well. And you can uh, customize the view of the chart with the chart options. And finally, to save um, this view, when you have configured it, you don't actually need to do anything. It will always be stored. Uh, so be careful about that if you change anything while viewing this, because the changes you make will be stored once you exit the, the view. And uh, once you go back in, it will remain the same as, as you left it the last time.